call from? An inmate at the Virginia Department of Corrections, Red Onion State Prison. To accept this call, press zero. This is Randall Vaughn, and I'm currently serving 1,214 years for capital murder in Red Onion State Prison in Pound, Virginia, USA. This is my podcast, Red Onion Randy. I hope you enjoy listening to me today. Today, I'm going to talk about reputation, the pros and the cons of it. And there are definitely pros and cons. There's pros and cons among the, you know, reputation among the inmates. There's pros and cons towards the reputation among staff members. And honestly, the reputation that I earned, and it was well earned, and I'll go into that here in a little bit, but quite frankly, it, with staff members, it's coming back to bite me in the ass. Because now I'm in general population. I'm no longer in solitary. I'm out among other inmates. You know, I'm walking the yard. I'm I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And I've already had to call a couple of people out over here. And the staff members, they all know about that because there's just so many snitches in the system now that they just, they tell everything. And because I had that violent reputation, they don't want to let me out to work. They don't want to let me out to pass out the trays because I'm a pod feeder now. I was a shower man, but, you know, I, I talked to the new lieutenant over here, and I got promoted to uh, being a pod feeder once Jess and Kirk got locked up and lost their jobs. So that reputation is harming me. It is harming me in the sense that they don't want to transfer me to lower security prison because they just automatically assume I'm going to do what I did before. It doesn't matter that April 28th of this year will be 16 years to the day that I haven't done a damn thing. The only thing they can see when they look at me is me slitting dudes' throats, is me fighting, is me just acting a damn fool and, you know, doing all that stupid stuff that I used to do. And it's biting me in the ass. I mean, to the point where I wish I didn't have that reputation. Yeah, it would probably make my life a little bit tougher among the inmates, but it would make my life easier among the staff members, and I think I would choose the easier life among the staff members than I would the harder life among the inmates, or the easier life among the inmates, I mean, excuse me. So what exactly is a reputation? How do you get a reputation, whether it's a good reputation or it's a bad reputation? For me, well, I just mentioned it. I've slit two people's throats since I've been in prison. When I was on Buckingham, I was slinging ink. I was doing tattoos. When a dude wouldn't pay me, and he act like he didn't want to pay me, or he was slow rolling me, thinking that he could bitch me because I was white, because I was little, or anything like that, I rolled up in his cell. Yo, man, where's my money? You're going to pay me one way or the other. Either you're going to pay me with commissary, or you're going to pay me with your life. And if I got to put your dumb ass in the dirt, I'm still taking your commissary. Because I ain't walking out of here empty-handed. And invariably, I got paid. So I had that reputation from doing that stuff. I had that reputation for being willing to fight anyone. And if I ever feel that me and you have problems and I don't think I can beat you in a fist fight, yeah, you really don't want to go down that road with me. Because the, the <laughs> I've said it before and I'll say it again. The most dangerous guys in prison are the guys that are scared of you. Because they're the ones, they're going to skip the fight. They're just going to make a good, sharpened piece of metal, and they're going to plant it in your jugular vein. And then they're going to keep poking holes in you until you stay down. Like, that's what fear will do to somebody. So, so I've earned my reputation. And especially way back in the day. Like, see, my nickname in prison was Ghost. You know, I've discussed this before on a previous podcast. That used to be my nickname. And it wasn't because I was white. It's because I was a scary dude. Because I didn't play games. I would hurt you. I was a very, very angry little bastard back in the day. Like, And I had no impulse control. I didn't have poor impulse control. I had zero impulse control. As soon as you made me mad, we went. Like, I didn't care where we was. Dead. It didn't bother me. Like, Getting shot by these guns in the booth, I don't care about that. I don't feel it. Once I get in that mindset, man, all pain flies. You know, I don't feel it. So I've earned my reputation that way. And in prison, being violent like that is actually considered a very, very good reputation among inmates because it's an entirely different culture in here. It's an entirely different lifestyle in here than it is from the streets because in here, violence speaks. 
violence is money in here because it's just it's like I, I'm not even honestly I'm really not even sure how to explain it. It's kind of one of those things where you almost just simply have to live it and experience to truly comprehend and understand it. But in prison, you want to be seen and, and you kind of have to be seen as a warrior, as a soldier, as a fighter, you know, as somebody who will put that work in because there's only two types of people in prison. You're either a predator or you're prey. That's all that there is to it. You are one or the other. And everybody in prison knows who is who. Look, you got a lot of fake dudes in here that have poked their chest out and they'll get real loud and they'll yell and scream when they get mad at somebody praying to God and pissing down their leg the whole time that the dude they're arguing and yelling with won't punch him in the mouth. Dudes in prison that are the real killers don't argue. They just fight. They just stab. They just do whatever it is. They don't talk about it. I have that reputation. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to talk to you. If we're going to go, we're going to go. And then you have the bad reputation. And a bad reputation is, you know, it is more than just being a snitch. It's being scared. It's being scared to fight. It's it's being weak. Because once you get that bone on you, it'll never leave you. And the predators that refuse to change, they refuse to grow up. They refuse to put that work in long enough to stare in that mirror of self to find out who they truly are. Because it's a terrifying prospect to see who you really are. To face up to who you really are, to face up to all your wrongs, to all your evils, all your flaws. Like, man, it, I'm telling you, it takes a hell of a lot of courage. And, it, you know, it's, it's not easy, so most guys hide from that. Once you get that reputation, though, as a bitch, it never leaves you. There's nothing you can do. You can go and stab four or five people, but once you have that reputation as a bitch, you stay a bitch. There's nothing you can do about it. So having a reputation as a fighter, having a reputation as a killer, having a reputation as somebody who will do something, who's not scared, you know, who doesn't care about that stuff, like that helps you a lot because it keeps the other predators away from you. Because let me tell you something, there ain't nobody in this pod, there ain't nobody in this prison system that's going to pull up on me thinking they can punk me, thinking that they can put me on my knees and put their dick in my mouth. There ain't a mother alive who can do that. I have that reputation in prison. Though, this is the thing about it, though, that's kind of, it's a two-edged sword. The prison officials, they all remember me from back in the day. They still remember Ghost because they're always seeing my file because I'm always pushing for a release. I'm always trying to get to a lower security prison so I can improve my life, so I can better my life, so I can get more privileges and do more things that I want to do. So they constantly remind themselves of who I am. But remember, for the last 16-some years, I haven't been ghost anymore. I don't go by ghost now. As a matter of fact, there's not a lot of people that even remembers that nickname belonged to me. I'm the original dude. As a matter of fact, there's a dude in the pod with me that he just got locked up about three hours ago. His name is Ghost. There's a bunch of dudes that came into the system. They heard about me in their in their county jails, in their city jails. They heard about the dude named Ghost. And so they come into the system, and when dudes ask me, yo, man, where you from? Oh, man, I'm from Danville, or I'm from Norfolk, or I'm from Richmond, or wherever. Oh, yeah, what they call you? So, man, I'm Ghost, man. Oh, you Ghost. You know what I'm saying? And they try to, to take my reputation and claim it for their own so that they would be safe. But the fact of the matter is, man, you can't do that because you eventually you have to live up to it. That's why I had to let that name go. That's why I go by Chris now. So there's still some guys in here who remember me from back in the day. And there's one guy in here named Ant who remembers me from back in the day. And I think he actually ran around and told a bunch of guys on the top tier who I was. So I kind of wish he wouldn't have done that because 
ever since Ant came in the park, I, I've seen the dudes on the top tier have been uh, kind of treating me a little bit differently. You know, they've been kind of keeping arms distance compared to what they was doing before he came in the pod, but, you know, it is what it is. And the reason why I don't want that reputation anymore, why I don't want to be known as Ghost anymore, is because eventually somebody's going to try that reputation. And that's another bad thing about having a reputation in prison. Eventually, somebody's going to put it to the test. And I don't live in fear of that because I know who I am, I know what I am, and I know what I can do and will do. But at the same time, man, I don't want to screw up everything I worked so hard for, you know, which is one reason why I don't want dudes knowing who I was or who I used to be. It's, it's a tricky thing, and it's not and it's not just a reputation. It's not just about being a killer or being a bitch. Like, there are so many different types of reputations in prison. If you mess with a boy, the prison boy is a homosexual. So if you have a dude that messes with a homosexual in prison, even if he just got some head one time, that follows you everywhere you go. And, like, there are certain dudes in prison that won't mess with you. Like, you take the Bloods. You know, it's a gang. You know, I'm pretty sure everybody knows who the Blood Gang is. But they got a rule. Like, if you've ever messed with a boy in the system, you can't be a Blood. And if you did mess with one and you didn't tell them and you joined and you became a Blood, and then they found out months or years later or whatever – that you used to mess with boys back in the day, they will kill you. They will put a hit out on you, and they, I mean, every last one of them will hunt you down. And even if you even if you run for your life, and you go to SEG and you check in, and, and, and the prison system has to send you out of state to keep you safe, guess what? There's not a prison system in the U.S. that don't have blood. These dudes all talk. They all stay connected with one another. So it follows you no matter where you go. So you've got reputations like that. You got recommended. Matter of fact, there's a dude in the pod that came in. Uh, this big white dude, uh, young dude. He, he's he's kind of like half country, half cities. He's kind of in between. He really doesn't know, you know, who he wants to be. And like, he's got a reputation as a fighter. He's got a reputation that he will fight. That like, he's not scared. Dude to throw down. But he has a reputation of running up huge bills, buying drugs, borrowing money from people running up gambling debts and stuff like that. And then when he can't pay that or he just don't want to pay that, he'll go pick a fight with somebody, get to fighting and get locked up, and that's his way of not having to pay his bill. But see, this is the thing. Like, dude won't even in the pod two hours before somebody else pulled up on me and say, yo, Chris, man, this dude up here, man, uh, you know, what's his name? Dude got a reputation. He'll fight, but he won't pay his bills, man. So don't don't give that dude nothing, man. Don't, you know, all right. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah, I respect that. Appreciate that. You got it. Now, look, at the same time, you got to take a lot of what people say as a grain of salt because you got some dudes that get jealous and hate on another dude. So the only time I believe that is if I know the dude that's telling me this stuff, I know his character, and I've known him for years. This ain't something that, you know, just – Somebody I met a month ago and I like and I'm cool with can tell me, yeah, I'll follow it in the back of my head, but it's going to go through one end right out the other because I'm going to judge my own. However, the dude that told me about the dude, yeah, this dude will be a fighter. You know, this dude will fight. He is a fighter, but he doesn't pay his debts. Like, I've known this dude for years. I've seen him. You know, he's the same person he was when I met him on day one as he is now, years later. So you have reputations like that where you can trust a person's word. You can trust a person's character because you've got a lot of dudes in here. Man, they'll switch. I knew a white dude back in the day. When this white dude, when he was around white dudes, his name was Jason. When he was around gang, you know, gang bangers, you know, black dudes and everything, his name was Jay Money. When he was around Muslims, his name was Jihad. Like, this dude... He, you know, wherever he finds himself, he's that person. He he just, he does anything and everything to fit in, you know, with whoever the dominant group in the pod is. Like, so this dude has a reputation of being a poser, of being a fake-ass dude. You have dudes that they have a reputation for always paying their debt. You have dudes that have a reputation for being a snitch, you know, for always telling. You got dudes that got a reputation for having... You know, for being a liar. You know, for never telling the truth. Like, there's all different types of reputations in the prison system. Unfortunately, and 
you know, as, as sad as it is to say, the best reputation you can have in prison is to be a killer and you pay your debts and you're not a boy. That's the best reputation you can have in prison. And those are the three reputations that I have. Those are the three reputations that I'm known for, whether I'm Ghost or whether I'm Chris. Now, I'm that same dude day in and day out. I walk around here with pride in who I am and what I am. Oh, yes, I'm a good dude. I always talk positive in here to these dudes, man. I'm always trying to get them out of that gangbanger mentality, out of that criminal mentality, out of that stupid mentality. I'm always talking that. So, and this is the one good thing, you know, I told y'all a couple weeks ago about the incident with me and Jess and Kirk and, you know, in the holiday package that I was going to order for them since I wasn't going to order it for myself. That whole situation, by the way, that situation actually worked itself out because the company had a, 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 a trouble with shipping and getting the stuff in on time. So they actually refunded over $100 of it. So they actually got their money back. You know, which I'm grateful for that because now they literally ain't a damn thing they can say to me. And I sent a receipt over to Jess and Seg, and she got it. You know what I'm saying? And she saw that, hey, the money was sent back and all that stuff. So my name is free and clear in that. But when I pulled up on my buddy, my Christian brother in here, and I was getting ready to fight him, the dude that I told y'all was built just like Aaron Donald, moves just like Aaron Donald. Like, I was ready to fight this dude. And it's like, we was ready to go. But thankfully, he, he was actually much calmer. You have one minute remaining. He was much calmer in the situation than I was. But the good thing that came from that is the dudes that witnessed it realized they were, wait a minute, you know what, man? This dude for real, like, Chris ain't talk, man. Chris will, Chris will go. Like, he's trained to go for real. So you, that actually was, so when I tell a guy, hey, look, man, you, you got to let this stuff go if you can. Like, you got to walk away from this. You got to turn from it. You got to work on it. And I'm still a work in progress myself. But, like, they believe it, you know, like, they've seen both sides of me. And that actually helps. It gives me a greater impact. But this is Red Onion Randy. I hope you enjoyed listening to me. Don't forget to check out my website. I'm also on Twitter now, at Red Onion Randy. Take care. Stay safe. Y'all have a good one out there. Thank you for using GTL.